Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. In this particular video, we're going to show you how to upgrade the SSD on your GBD Win 3, as well as reinstalling Windows 10 on your device. This video will be broken up into a few different parts. We're going to be focusing first on opening up the device first, which is arguably the hardest part of this entire process. Installing it isn't. Honestly, the least of your worries is what type of screwdriver you have. You do need something that has a thin enough barrel that'll fit into these long cavities, because they can be a little bit deep to get into so the only thing you need is to make sure that the bit that you have can go into that recess and then be able to screw it out if it's too thick it will be the whole the size of the hole will prevent it from going in all the way there are one two three four five six seven screws that need to be taken out entirely the screw taking out the screws is obviously the easiest part the difficult part is removing the case because it's very very snug in here I want to stress that you should not be using any type of metal tool. Do not be, do not use any type of metal spudger such as this. It's significantly easy to mar the case. What you really need to do is run some type of plastic spudger tool or a guitar pick along the entire edge as you'll be on clipping all of the pieces. That is the best way to open up the GPD Win 3 without putting nicks on the device or marring up the case of the device. That's kind of it, so we'll just go straight into that process right now. One tool that I do like to use is an MTA styled card. These are just like thin plastic, but they are rather rigid. Uh, they're in abundance around New York City. If you don't have these types of cards, um, I don't even know where to, to find these, I apologize. I mean, you could still just use a plastic spudger tool, but I t tend to like to use this to at least get into a crevice. And I've already marred up the top of this a bit, but I'll show you what I mean. You just basically wanna force it in there. And once you're, once you're in, once you have like a, a pivot point, you wanna get your plastic spudger tool and then just ride along All right, now that we got purchase, there you go. So this screw is still held in there. Uh, I couldn't get it out. I don't have any magnetic screwdriver, so let's put that on the side. Now that we've gotten our, basically our foot in the door, this is where you want to just start riding it along this entire seam. And this will unlock every other clip. This is the hardest part of opening up the GPD Win 3. Every one of these clips is super strong that hold the Win3 together. So you kind of just want to rock it along. All right, so at this point, we just want to undo these two screws here that hold the fan in place, which will also be obscuring our access to the SSD M2 slot. Apologies for my hand being in the way. These two screws are relatively large. It's, it's hard not to miss these, so these are easily the fan screw. Now that the fan is out of the way, the entire area for the M2 slot is very easy to get to. Go ahead and remove this screw. Now, it should be noted that when you get your GPD Win 3, you would already have an SSD in here. So we're going to go ahead and just insert it this way. So you can see that it's keyed in a specific area. It's keyed right there. And the slot for where that goes into is also keyed. So it can only go in one way. You're going to want to put it in at an angle. Like this. Once you get those fingers in there, you're going to want to go ahead and push down, and at this point, you can put the screw back in. Alrighty, now that you have the SSD put back in there, you can go ahead and reinsert this. We're going to put the screws back in. Alright, at this point, you've gone ahead and replaced the SSD. You can now go ahead and start to put the entire case back on. In this particular instance, I've already formatted a little micro SD card and put the Windows 10 installation ISO on that little 8 gigabyte card. The following instructions will show you how to do that, at which point you can then go ahead and insert the micro SD into the slot right here without having USB, or you can just use USB-A, which is right there, if that is easier for you. 
at which point we can start taking a look at the next process. To get started, you're going to want to go to your search tool and type in Windows Media Creation Tool. From there, you're going to click on the first link, which should get you to the correct place. You're not going to want to click Update Now. You're actually going to want to go to Download Tool Now. This will download a tool which will format and automatically image any particular USB flash drive that you have in your system. When this tool is opened, you're just going to want to click Accept here. It should default to Upgrade This PC. Now you're going to want to click Create Installation Media. From there, it's going to start scanning your system. Choosing these defaults is fine. You can uncheck this and see if you have any other particular options that you might want to select, if it's Windows 10 Pro or not. But for this, using the recommended options is fine. You definitely want to choose USB flash drive here. You don't want ISO file unless you purposely want to just download the ISO and then burn it to something else if you want. Having it to the USB flash drive makes it extremely simple. Then you go ahead and click Next. Here you're seeing a bunch of removable drives that my system sees as removable drives. These are a SATA SSDs that I have on my system. This is the USB flash drive that I have connected to my system. So make sure that you do select the correct one because it will format the entire disk on you and you want to make sure you get that right. At that point, you just want to click next and then this process will begin. Wait till this gets to 100% and then you're going to connect it to the machine that you want to install Windows on. Alrighty, at this point, you've went ahead and screwed the backplate back on. Now we're going to go ahead and try to reinstall Windows at this point because you should effectively have a blank drive. So in this particular regard, I've already gone ahead and backed up my drivers with double driver. I will include my set of double drivers for you. It'll be in the description field below if you want to download that. Also, GPD does have the drivers that they offer to everyone, which you can get directly on GPD's site. So there's lots of different ways that you can get the drivers. In this particular regard, I'm going to be using the backups that I already use just because those are most convenient for me to get. Additionally, I went ahead and put Windows 10 on this micro SD card. Now, for a lot of people, you're just going to be using this USB-A port to connect a flash, flash drive, which you formatted Windows 10 on. That's fine as well. The only important bit here is that this capacitive keyboard that GPD has on here, it does take a, a quick moment for the keyboard to initialize. So you have a brief moment to actually jump into the BIOS. Additionally, the Dell key, the delete key, which is right here, is actually a function key. So we have to press function first before we can actually hit the Dell key because you'll be hitting backspace instead. So what you need to do is you need to keep on hitting the FN key until you feel the device vibrate. As soon as you feel the keyboard give the force feedback vibration, you're going to want to hold FN and then hold the backspace to press Dell or delete to jump into the UFI. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on. I'm going to go ahead and tap FN. Okay. And just like that, I went ahead and got into the UEFI. At this point, the capacitive keyboard, as far as the computer is concerned, is a directly connected keyboard. It is operating system agnostic. It does not need an op it does not need an operating system to operate. It can work across anything. As far as anything is concerned, this is just a standard hit based keyboard. Now, in this particular case, again, I put my Windows 10 build on this micro SD card. I went and went over to the tab for save and exit. I'm going to go down using the down keys on the keyboard itself, and I'm going to highlight my particular micro SD card. Now, if you're using a USB flash, uh, flash drive, it might say SanDisk, it might say Samsung, it might say generic. So depending on whatever you have in there, just be sure to take a look at the correct drive that you're looking at, and then go ahead and press enter. Now, the thing to be mindful of is that all of these devices there are using off the shelf parts and put together so it's a a some of the parts are you know the sum of the whole is greater than some of the parts this is a portrait based dis display so when windows first initializes it will orient itself in this particular way because that's how it thinks the display is so it reads t uh, 720 by 1280 instead of 1280 by 720. You, it doesn't really matter you just want to basically press the tab key until you get to next and go ahead and press enter. Now, the good nine, good X touch driver is not initialized right now. It actually, Windows 10 doesn't include it by default, so it won't work by default right now. For this installation, I'm going to be doing everything through the keyboard itself. So we're gonna go ahead and click spacebar and uninstall now. 
at this particular Windows 10 activation screen, you do have a few options. You could use the key that GPD has supplied you, or you can use a different key if you wanted to use a different tier of Windows 10, like Windows 10 Pro. Alternatively, let's say that you get the drive in, but you just wanted to format your drive and not have anything GPD on there and just have a fresh build of Windows 10. Uh, with the key that's already on your device will actually translate over, so you can actually skip this part. But you can enter in whatever you want here. Uh, I'm just going to click I don't have a product key. I'm going to hit spacebar. Or, yeah. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and select Windows 10 Pro. All right, we're going to click spacebar right there to click the little check and hit enter. We're going to hit tab to go to custom and hit enter here. Now, if you put in a fresh NVMe SSD, you won't actually have any partitions on here. But because I am overriding the previous SSD that was on my system, these partitions are here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything that's here. Now, you can do that easily by just holding down the alt key. And in this instance, it's D. So I'll press D and left and then enter. So you're going to just go ahead and delete all of these partitions that you see here. Now, again, if you put in a fresh stick, all these will be empty by default. We just want to get it to that same exact state. And there we go. You see on an allocated space. At this point, you can just press enter and it'll just jump onto next. And we're going to start installing Windows 10. So it's going to jump through this process and we're going to go to the installation phase. Windows 10 by default actually contains a tremendous amount of drivers already included that will get your Win3 up to speed, including the Wi-Fi chipset. So the AX200 Intel chipset is already included in this Windows 10 build. So you're going to be off to the races in terms of getting whatever type of internet access you need, especially for getting drivers to download or otherwise. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what happens next. Alrighty, so here we are at the next part. Pretty much you can just click next all the way through. You're going to get to a screen where you're going to see any available Wi-Fi access points that you have in your area to connect to, at which point that you'll connect to your account and it'll also download whatever updates or drivers are needed in the background and then go forward from there. So I'm just going to keep on clicking next. Alrighty, when you get to this part of the installation process, you can choose whatever you want. In this particular regard, I just go through and tab and say no to everything or minimize as much as I possibly can. Another type of tool that is good to use is Windows, well, not Windows, is a tool from Ono called Shut Up 10, which kind of minimizes a bunch of things happening in the background. And a lot of these types of options are for you to decide. I'm just going to say no to most all of them. Once you boot into Windows, you're going to want to go ahead and rotate the screen so that it can operate a lot easier and a lot better. All right, so at this particular point, touch is still not working, so you're going to want to use the built-in mouse mode that GPD includes. So we're going to go ahead and click Display Settings. And we're going to want to go to Layout. It says Portrait right there. And we want to just click on landscape and say, keep changes. Now, the next thing that we want to do is start to update our drivers. One thing that you can do is just go to Windows Update and start that process. I'm going to go ahead and click check updates. I'm going to let Windows Update do it first and then from there, you can either use GPD's own drivers from GPD's website. You can use Double Driver to restore drivers that you backed up yourself. Additionally, again, I have the my own Double Driver backup from this that is in the description field. It includes everything. You can just run that and then click Restore on that, and it will restore all the drivers that are there, which is going to be necessary for two major things here, which is the fingerprint sensor as well as the touchscreen uh, and potentially the sound drivers. But anyway, you might want to get that directly from GPD as they're going to have the better updates for the touch display as well as the fingerprint sensor. So I'm including the double driver backup as a just in case. You should really go over to GPD's website and get the drivers and in install them from there. Windows Update will do a lot of the drivers by default, though. At this particular time, you are done. Your SSD that you put in there is brand new and large, but that's pretty much it. This particular GPD Win 3, this is the last time I'm going to hold on to this unit. This is the 1135G7 version. This has just been freshly formatted, and it's headed off to its new owner who won the giveaway. 
Anywho, that's how to update the SSD and how to install Windows 10 on your GPD Win 3. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.